Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is y'all and peace out to the rest of you. The blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, sign of black end. And shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Look, I just got through premiering uh, Even the Ex-Feminist, and I probably should have titled that part one, but I didn't know what was going to happen. When I um, was pressing for its premiere, uh, something happened. Black Uru Strikes was there and MLR was there. Shout out to both of them. And it got me to notice something. I thought back to the ex-feminist I know, and I, I do know some ex-feminist. I mean, my father's sister is an ex-feminist. And she's been consistently one for years now that I think about it. Um, my, uh, uh, my classmate, uh, she didn't go to the same school as me, but our schools were near each other because you got a lot of universities in Atlanta. Uh, was, she's an ex-feminist. She's gotten rid of all that stuff. And there's some others. I mean, truth be told, my wife got rid of that stuff. Uh, my, uh, and then there's her in-law. So there are women that, that shake off this feminism, but when I think about it, there's something else. There is a pattern, and they're not an exception to this. As much as I love these uh, ladies in my family and my wife, there is something to which they're not an exception. And I'm still going to keep a close eye. I do this anyway because human beings are human. And I expect all of them to keep a close eye on me. I expect my wife to watch me closely, uh, even though she loves me. Um, as far as I can tell, she does. Um, I get along well with her relatives, my in-laws. But I expect them to somewhat keep a close eye if we're in the vicinity of each other. I just expect these things anyway. I mean, after all, I'm a man. So I expect to be scrutinized even by other men. You know what? There is one thing, though, that they all have in common. Not a single solitary one of them is pre-wall. Not one. I do not know of anyone if, if there is, I've certainly forgotten about them. I am aware of no one that is pre-wall and ex-feminist. Now, I'm sure that I may be forgetting about some whom I don't know to be feminist or not. There are some ladies whose conditions I really just don't know. I don't know. Are you feminist or are you not? I, I really don't know. But there are others. I mean, though, all those who I can remember right now that ex-feminist are not pre-wall. I am aware of not a single solitary lady pre-wall that was feminist and threw it off. There are many ladies whom I don't know. Pre and post wall. And I'm going to define a wall as let's say 35. As a matter of fact, the one, uh, the closest to an exception um, I married her. I don't know exactly what age, uh, because one thing I have not asked about is her age, but, uh, um, and that's because it really has not been important to me that she be young. I've, I've had my children. I get it. But this is not the case for most of the men. So I realize that my situation is abnormal and I'm not going to use my situation in order to say, see, see, you're wrong. No, you're right about your situations, gentlemen. And this is one in which I don't know at what age she threw it off. I'm pretty sure it was before she left the U.S. So that would place her at having done so pre-wall. But even then, having done so in her 20s, I don't think so. I, I don't think that's when she did it. So it just goes to show that there is a limit. And this, um, uh, this inability of the Westerner, the Western lady, to cast aside that, um, 
when they are in their, we know they don't do it in their 20s. I'm not aware of any that have done so in their 20s, not even late 20s. Been feminist and cast it aside in their late 20s. I don't know of anyone having done that. And that tells me right then and there. Don't expect it. I don't have the ground to stand on to say to you, at least consider that possibility. Maybe you can consider, but I can't sit up and say, well, you know, keep an eye out just in case of the exception. No, it's more like that exception is going to be so rare. If it exists at all, you will never meet them. It's like a winning lottery ticket. Lottery tickets are common. They're abound. They abound. But winning lottery tickets are rare. Oh, God, yes. So uh, believe you me. You can't expect that you're going to come across the ex-feminist in, your tw- in her 20s. <laughs> and the fact that you can't find that means that it's almost impossible for them to be in their 20s and realize this. And that I blame on them and I blame on us because, again, we men have made things too easy. <laughs> this is a problem. We make things too easy when they're not young enough for us, when they're not attractive enough. We still make things too easy. We normal men do. So I I hold us halfway accountable for that. But if we do, it further uh, convinces me of what I said to you previously. And I was fully convinced at that point. Don't approach her. Because see, when they're in their 20s and they get all this attention, this is why they can't shut. They can't shuck this off and shake it off and shed it. They don't know they need to. Now, the fact that they're not willing to think ahead and consider that possibility, that's on them. I blame them for that. Because I know women can think ahead and plan ahead. I know they're capable of doing it. But the fact that if they do think ahead, they don't realize that they need to shed this off, I blame us for. You see her fine as may wine walking down the street and you holler at her. You have to understand something. Don't approach her is still a good hashtag by which to go because even if in order to get approached, they start walking down these busy streets, bucket naked, as uh, Bernie Mac said on um, uh, that movie about the strippers. I forgot the name of it. Sorry, Lisa raced. uh, She was in it, too. I forgot the name. But even if they walk down the street like that in order to get approached, even if that's the case. Because men aren't approaching, the men that approach them are going to be the ones they don't want. And yet and still, they're going to use that attention to justify not having to get their minds right. They will play that game until they have to work for the junk when they're young and attractive. See, even the environment changing right now in the U.S., with this, the rent moratorium scare, I mean, I think it's been extended, but even with that, with the scare that it's presented, the fear of the rent moratorium's ending or the eviction moratorium's ending at some point, <sighs> them losing their jobs, becoming unemployed, with all of this, even with this, gentlemen, you gotta understand that it took that for them to even pretend to be cooperative. That's not convincing to me. So that being said, gentlemen, that's even more of a reason. Shout out to MLR and Black Who Strikes for getting me to think about this and realize what the pattern was. Yeah, they probably do exist. My aunt's been pretty consistent um, about uh, uh, with this uh, ex-feminism stuff, even before I knew any red pill terminology. She's been against it. And I think that that's part of how my dad got um, away from a lot of that stuff, too. But I'm going to tell y'all more, too. I'm going to tell y'all straight. Even she had to be, I think she was in her uh, 50s when she got over that stuff. That's too late. I mean, in terms of being convenient for men, that's too late. And as I've said, I'm in this for us to get the outcomes we want or no one gets any outcome they want. In other words, I'm, I'm in this so that either we get the outcomes we want or neither men nor women get the outcomes they want. Because right now what's going on is women are able to get these outcomes they want and men can't get, we can barely get anything uh, sustainable from them. Forget what we want, just what's sustainable and tolerable, they decide to withhold. 
they are driving men away and one of the ways we know is because like i said before you got to make all the approaches for every single step of the way from the first conversation all the way up to the altar where they want to be in the first place you got to do all the asking trying effort making and impressing and then they finally take the initiative when they want out and then they go file for divorce that means they get what they want you don't get anything you want you don't even get what you could tolerate thank you for listening black heart black mind blackout again Assalamu alaikum and black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction a judgment day.